Seven Days to Die 1.0 is close to release, so I've made a video compiling absolutely everything I can find that's coming in 1.0. It's split up by timestamps in the description. The sources I've used to cobble this together are also linked in the description, including the Seven Days to Die forums, in the official 1.0 dev diary, the 7 Days to Die developer streams, as well as linking some 1.0 content made by Guns Nerds and Steel and Wayward Echo because they made some catches in their videos that I missed. We all have different takes and interpretations of the update, so check out those videos if you still want more 1.0 content after this. Anyway, quick intro out of the way, let's get into it. 7 Days to Die 1.0 is scheduled to come out to the public on the Steam Experimental branch on Monday the 24th of June. 2024, and it'll be available for participants of the streamer weekend on the 21st. The projected date for the public PC release is July 24th and console will apparently get it the next day. As for some console specific news, the game exists, works and is coming very soon apparently. It'll be on PlayStation and Xbox but you will have to buy a new game because the old version of the game is completely discontinued and basically they can't update it. But they are working on discounts for people who own the old version. That said, the game will also be getting a price increase to 45 USD. Console will not have crossplay at launch, but they do have it working, apparently. Some unspecified issue with either Sony or Microsoft is slowing down the implementation of the feature though. So that's all the release stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual content of the update. First of all, no, you won't be able to load your Alpha 21 world into 1.0, so a new world and save will be required. Arguably the biggest change coming in 1.0 is going to be the massive overhaul to character models and character creation. The character models have been updated to the 21st century and the character creator has been updated with it. You can choose between male or female, white, black, Asian and native. I say it like that because it has a question mark for some reason. Right now each race gets 8 faces split between male and female and everyone has 32 eye options. There are also a lot of hair options and hair colour options and male characters get 3 separate sliders for facial hair. I'm glad we're prioritising the important stuff here. Now I do have a slight gripe with this new character creator which is that yes it is obviously much higher fidelity than the old one. But it also massively reduces the customizability of the character, removing three pages of sliders we used to have. Also, the lack of a funny skin colour slider that I can use to turn myself neon bright green is a crime. It's not a realism thing because we get makeup and manscaping in the post-apocalyptic setting, but I can't make myself bright blue and have a two foot wide face. This is oppression. Aside from that though, it is a drastic improvement to the character model department. Also, now you have a slightly less terrible first person hand model that accurately reflects your skin colour unlike the previous one. And this new character creator of course comes with a host of smoother animations that are going to look great in multiplayer. This character overhaul has allowed and required the fun pimps to overhaul armour. The previous 9 slot system has been replaced with a 4 slot system. Now you have a helmet outfit, gloves and boots. These new outfits are much higher fidelity than the last ones and there are 16 new outfits. Each of these will give you various stat boosts which I'll get into in a second. They're divided into three classes, light, medium and heavy. The light armour is comprised of the primitive lumberjack preacher, rogue, athletic and enforcer armour. The medium armour is farmer, biker, scavenger, ranger, commando and assassin. And to add to that, we have the heavy armors, which are Miner, Raider, Nomad, and Nerd. Each of these has unique effects that will scale with the quality of the item. As of right now, we don't know all the effects that are going to come for all 16 armors, but we do have the pretty much 100% confirmed effects for three of them, but do note they are of course subject to any kind of changes between now and the actual update. So far we have seen the assassin outfit, the helmet will give you a bonus to sneak damage, the body will give you a bonus to sneak effectiveness, the gloves will give you a flat attack speed bonus, I hope it means melee because being able to shoot faster with those would be so OP, and the boots will give you a reduction in sneak noise while sprint sneaking. And the quality of the actual item will determine precisely how powerful the effect is, and wearing all four pieces of a set will give you a fifth effect. We don't know any of the confirmed fifth effects yet though. Another set we saw the full lineup of was the Enforcer. The Enforcer glasses give you a barter boost, 
the body gives critical resistance. This makes you less susceptible to things like abrasions, lacerations, and pretty much any critical injury from combat. I think except concussions because stuns give you concussions and stuns are a separate resistance statistic. Might be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. Enforcer gloves give you a reduction in fuel usage and enforcer shoes give you a run speed boost. This serves presumably to replace the college jacket which had the same effect. And the last set we saw the full run of was the Raider Armour, which looks like it's a replacement for the Iron Armour, but seems to actually be a replacement for Steel, because the combined armour rating of four sets of Raider Armour seems to be in the 80s, which is where Steel would take you. Anyway, Raider Helmets give you stun resistance, the chest gives you crit healing, which basically controls how long it takes for you to heal things like broken limbs, similar to the secondary effect of healing factor or the effect of health bars. The gloves give you a melee damage boost and the boots give you safe fall distance which is honestly seems out of place for a sort of metal armour but whatever. Now Assassin, Raider and Enforcer are the only armours we've seen the effects of in-game basically first hand through dev streams but we do have some old concept art that listed the effects for some of the other armours that we do know was coming but we don't really know if these effects have been translated to now so take these with a pinch of salt because these are almost two years old at this point so do not expect any of these effects but just in case let's go over them. The Nomad armour which is an armour that's coming was said to give you a boost to carry weight, lock picking, radiation damage healing and 20% faster climbing along with trading 20% more effectively as well as each piece contributing to radiation resistance. Now, radiation isn't coming in 1.0, so that part obviously won't be in this update. I don't think any of those effects sound like they'll be in 1.0 to be honest, they sound pretty lame compared to the more powerful effects they seem to be giving the armors now. Farmer armor, which is actually a medium armor, not light as in this picture, would give you extra farming yield, rifle damage boosts, extra seed harvesting, decreased stamina usage when sprinting in grass, and food items wouldn't encumber you, and you would get a boost to your armor for wearing all four pieces to make up for the fact that it was light. Again, I'm skeptical on these making it into the game because I cannot stress how ancient these images are. The Lumberjack gives you a 20% less stamina usage with axe, 10% more damage with axes, increases your wood harvest by 20%, and you can sprint 10% faster in snow and forest biomes, and you get increased carry weight and armor for the full set. I could actually see most of that making it into the game, they're a bit more in line with the effects we've seen that far. Knowing my luck, that'll be the only one that was changed. Now Miner is heavy armour, and apparently it'll make you use less stamina with a pick, deal more damage with a pick, increase your harvest yield when mining, reduce your fall damage, you're gonna see that one a lot, and ore will never encumber you. The Nerd armour, which is also somehow heavy, gives you better stats when crafting. That is absolutely not going to happen, that'd be terrible, and I don't even know if it's possible for that to work with the system the game has. So if that happens, I'll upload a 20 hour playthrough of LEGO Star Wars 3. The goggles give you extra intelligence and XP, and I believe this will be changed too, because we've seen how this mechanic is going to be tackled in the game, and I'll show you that later. The gloves will give you extra damage with batons, which seems actually pretty likely, and the shoes will make you take less fall damage. And the finishing effect would be that robotic weapons do more damage, and reading books gives you 10 times XP. Kind of a weird one, but okay. Scavenger, unlike in this image, is now medium armour, and it'll make you use 10% less stamina with harvest tools and harvest 10% faster. You'll gain more resources when harvesting, and the helm is supposed to see what items you can harvest by focusing on a block. Yeah, for that one, I'll upload a full playthrough of the LEGO Star Wars Complete Saga, buddy. We know how this game works, that shit ain't happening. There's a phrase, too good to be true, and I'm so cynical I applied everything in this game. Also, the boots would boost your encumbrance, or reduce your encumbrance, however you want to think about it. And it gives you a 20% higher loot stage. That's all the old, ancient, deep fried concept art analysed. Take it with a whole salt shaker, and now that I might owe my viewers like 40 hours of LEGO Star Wars content, and that'll be pretty funny if that actually all comes true. Now, I alluded to some features there by saying that some of these effects have been tackled in different ways, and that's why I don't think they're going to be part of certain armors, and that's largely because of armor mods. First of all, we will be seeing quadruple armor mods to make up for having a lot less armor slots. We'll also be seeing the cigar as a mod, along with mods to independently increase strength, perception, fortitude, agility, intelligence, and XP gain to make up for the lack of glasses. 
It'll be a quite nice nerf to the power of things like cigars and nerdy glasses by spreading their effects over multiple mods and slots, instead of those being the obvious choice for their slots like before. And the night vision goggles are now a mod as well, but I guarantee those won't appear on your character model and if they do that shit, I'll also do a full playthrough of LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. I'm just piling 80 hours of work on myself and I don't even care because it's not happening. I really hope LEGO Star Wars doesn't become like my germ of debt, that would suck. Actually, it wouldn't suck, I could play those games. A lot of work though. Anyway, while we're still on the topic of mechanical changes, let's cover some of the less impactful ones than armor. The Dew Collector has been changed and it no longer needs a water filter to craft. Instead, it takes basic crafting materials but it'll only produce murky water, so you'll need a cooking pot to make it drinkable. To get boiled water, you can still use the water filter as an upgrade though. There are two more upgrades as well though, one that increases the speed and one that increases the storage of the Dew Collector from 3 to 6. Speaking of storage, we're getting a new upgradable storage box which comes with writable text on it and can be upgraded from wood through to steel to have even more storage. I will be continuing to litter my home with unmarked wooden chests though. There is now a quick swap key that lets you switch to a slot on your hotbar with a hotkey. Seems kind of redundant for PC, I've just been putting all the useful shit on 1, 2, 3 and 4 the whole time, but I suppose for consoles where the hotbar is probably going to suck, this will be a lot more useful for you. Vehicles are seeing some mechanical changes as well. You can now put a plow mod on your truck to reduce the damage taken from ramming. This also applies to the other vehicles with armor mods. The gyrocopter now sits two people by default and the truck now seats four by default with the expanded seating mod making it six seats. While we're here, all the vehicles have received massive visual updates. The bike looks like this. The mini bike looks like this. They got rid of the toilet seat mod. The motorcycle looks like this. The truck looks like a monster truck now. And the gyrocopter, arguably the best improvement, looks like this. Final major mechanical change is the challenge system and it's the thing I'm most looking forward to in this update because I'm a loser. This replaces the old tutorial system and journal system with something somewhat more engaging. Each challenge lane has 10 missions and the first page is dedicated pretty much entirely to teaching you what the journal used to that only the biggest turbo nerds in existence ever read the journal so they made this. You will see basics of survival, homesteading, advanced survival, crafting, traders, and harvesting. This will teach you how to do all of those things, and you'll get a reward for completing those quests. Hey, that sounds awfully familiar to a mod I know. Hmm. Anyway, page 2 features gathering challenges, farming, healing, survivor, which presumably just makes you do a bunch of weird survivalism things to help add the veneer that this is a survival game when it's not as well as Hunter and Zombie Slayer, which seem self-explanatory. These are less about tutorials and more just about big milestones to keep track of achievements you might want to get in the game, like using a certain amount of healing items, killing a certain amount of zombies, or mining a certain amount of ore, because we all have that one friend who completely undermines the entire world with an auger overnight. Completing a challenge line will get you a quest to go see the trader for some kind of reward. The actual rewards are currently unknown though outside of the 100 XP you get for the challenge. I would be very disappointed if they didn't increase the amount of XP you get for these challenges. If I kill 10,000 zombies and you give me 100 XP, I'm putting a hole in my screen. I do think I saw one of the challenge quests in the dev stream give you a shovel though, which is mildly interesting. Now this whole mechanic could be pretty interesting assuming the milestones are actually made a challenge and that they give you rewards that make them worth getting. If nothing else, Lathan did say that it's extremely moddable so I'm sure that the mod developers will make something cool out of it even if the fun pimps don't. I do expect to have like 10 pages of cool shit to do though. So let's move on to some balance changes. The traders are being rebalanced in somewhat unclear ways. The idea though is that we've been promised that traders and trader quests in particular will be a less powerful way of progressing and right now they're easily the fastest way to get amazing gear especially in multiplayer if you have five people doing five quests a day the amount of rewards there is insane so presumably those trader quest rewards are going to be getting nerfed in some way 
and we do know that the quest duke rewards are being cut in half, but that wouldn't be as impactful as actually reworking the items you get from quests. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some kind of trader quest stage implemented that actually limits what you can get from rewards based on your levels, or just putting higher level items much deeper into the quest progression. For example, right now you can get steel weapons and tools in like tier 3s, I wouldn't be surprised if they pushed that down to like tier 4 and 5, or maybe they'll just tweak the frequency of these things to make the less powerful rewards more common, things like book bundles and 25 forged steel. There's a lot of options they have to slow it down if that's what they want. To help balance out the other progression methods, you can now craft tier 6 items. It requires a legendary item component though, which are very rarely looted or bought from the trader. So that's a decent change that will make crafting leveled gear more relevant long term. Zombies are being rebalanced so that higher level zombies in high level PYs will have more health so that they'll be much harder to kill in multiplayer and make multiplayer in general more difficult. In that same vein, they're fixing a bug which caused party game stage to not correctly scale, so now co-op should be harder with that as well. The last three sections of this video here are going to be the world, technical stuff, and then a breakdown of some of the details you may have missed in the trailer. Saying that out loud, there's one thing you definitely didn't miss in the trailer, but it deserves to be pointed out anyway. So let's get into the final stretch here. Consider dropping a like and sub if you've made it this far and I'll be breaking down the final dev stream after the next one happens so you might want to stay subbed for that. But with that out of the way, let's get into the world changes. First of all, random world generation has been improved. The burned biome has been added back into the random world generator and you can now choose biome layouts such as forest center which will put a forest in the center of your world and the wasteland center which I think you can figure out. There is also line which will go through all the biomes easiest to hardest in a line. World generation will now be faster, especially road generation, and the random world generator has UI improvements and camera improvements. If you go down really close to the map on the random world generator camera, you can see the spawn points that are marked by a small cross. Traders will now always spawn in the same biome in the same order. Trader Wrecked will spawn in the forest and he will send you to Jen in the burnt biome. He will send you to Bob in the desert who will send you to Hugh in the snow who will send you to Joel in the wasteland. Roads are apparently going to be smoother and you'll find more wilderness POIs. Speaking of POIs, there's going to be 75 new POIs in 1.0, 5 of which are tier 5. We have the tier 5 school which looks like this the Minotaur Theatre, which looks like this, a new hotel, which looks like this, and we have the Athletics Complex, which looks like this. And finally, we have another hotel, the Haven Hotel, which is seen in these images. Some other notable POIs are the Blue Ridge Installation at Tier 4, the Pipeline Gas Company at Tier 4, and Gold Rush Station. There are also much bigger Tier 0 POIs like the Meridian Center. These exist to pad out the downtown section with things that aren't massive FPS hogging skyscrapers. Speaking of FPS hogging skyscrapers, windows are going to be less taxing on performance as you get closer to improve the skyscraper performance. There will be a new lighting update manager and there are changes on how ambient occlusion handles large amounts of props. Basically a bunch of babble that means there should be better performance, particularly in big PYs in dense areas, which they say every time and it doesn't actually seem to improve. But maybe the console devs ruthlessly trying to get this game to work on a console will come up with some optimizations that can help out on PC too which I'm sure is massively helped by all the graphical upgrades in this update too. There is a new rock. Please clap for the new rock. There are new clutter models, which is what I'm calling these. There are new plant models, which make them no longer 2D. There are new explosion effects. There's also new gore that I'm not going to show you in ridiculous detail because I'm not risking monetization on a video I spent like two days making. At least I'm honest. The zombies are seeing some graphical changes as well. Zombies have a new tinting system to add some minor visual differences between the variants of the same zombie. This feature has been leveraged to make some more unique zombies like the prisoner zombie and the bowling zombie as well. Also, the demolition zombie has been upgraded to look like this. The animals are getting some visual upgrades too. Every single animal in the game is getting visual improvements except, I think, the chicken and the snake. The dire wolf looks like this now. And Grace looks like this now. The rest of the regular animals have fur tech to make them look less like plastic toys. 
the stag, the doe, the cougars, the bears, the pigs, the boars, the coyotes, the wolves and rabbits have all been given improved models and animations. To go along with all these visual improvements, there are a few audio improvements as well. Jen and Rekt are going to be keeping their old voice actors with massively expanded libraries to their voice lines. Joel, Hugh and Bob are getting new voice actors with similarly massive audio libraries for their voice lines. They will now have their own opening and closing lines, so no more Trader Joel everywhere. And the inventory now has more sounds when moving things around rather than just generic drag and drop sounds. Bullets jingle, machetes make slicey noises, and it didn't sound very good to be honest, but it's something you might want to know about. The final section here is four interesting things I noticed in the trailer for 1.0. The obvious one I don't actually think you missed is the nuke. Who knows what this actually means? Will there be a nuke in the game? You would hope so, given they put it in a gameplay trailer, but they've said nothing about it. I also noticed that frames are now frames again, and there is some goop on the floor. And the cop's bit now has a better effect. That's it. Absolutely everything I could find in 1.0 from various sources. I'm sure there will still be things I missed, so let me know down in the comments. Let me know your favourite feature, if any, of 1.0 as well. And subscribe, because this video is going to be outdated in like 3 days when they do the final dev stream and reveal even more info, but I'll be making a video on that info as well. Thank you to my members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.